Well, a new soundtrack, perhaps. <laughs> Welcome to my orchid channel, Karen's Orchids. Well, this is a real jungle, even though a few of my plants are missing. Where are they? They're here. Some of them are on my bathroom floor. Yep. And some of them are in my bathtub. Yeah. I bet you saw the little uh, short clip, short video. <laughs> on this orchid, she's still there. She still needs, oh, I forget to count, uh, one, two treatments left for her. Gonna treat each and every one of these guys for starters. Yay. Out of the 300 I've got, with neem oil solution, uh, soft green soap and water, yeah, to dissolve the uh, neem oil. Yeah, we need the little soap as well. But anyway, these guys are going to be sprayed with that solution to get rid of any kind of pests. Uh, I'm struggling a lot with thrips and what else? Yeah, the scale. Seems to have been um, out conquered <laughs> by thrips nowadays. Thanks for that, but I believe that thrips are even a uh, worse enemy. But anyway, five days in a row in order to get rid of all of the eggs and the mature animals so to speak. It's the cycle. Five days. I've heard from an expert in these types of things. So I got a lot of work ahead of me. I do need to spray the flowers as well. And in some cases you need to even cut the flower spikes off. You can see my gorgeous pastel colored Phalaenopsis hybrid. Uh, I didn't really want to take the chance. After the five days treatment, I just yeah, I decided to uh, cut them off. Yeah, That's life. Nowadays, I have to make up my own themes <laughs> in the beginning of the videos. All of the songs I'm paying for are miraculously nowadays being copyrighted. Yes. So I need to pay. <laughs> Even though I already paid. So I'm a little bit annoyed. I don't like that kind of... Uh, ways I'm doing stuff. Uh, I don't like to be cheated. That's why I'm not using the um, intros anymore. So here we are, all set on the table. A lot of orchid equipment, a lot of tools, different tools, different kinds of medium and additives. Let's start with the Bulbo, Bulbo Films, the two I got, new ones, by colour two coloured one <laughs> and the undescribed one Bob Palavanensi yes uh, I always use a um, mix my own shall we say my own <laughs> I bet somebody else has tried it out before but <laughs> that I don't know of so um, let's call it my mixture for now which means I want to use it for these two, or perhaps one more orchid, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I mix up a fair amount, I think. Perlite. Tablespoon of biochar. The disinfective properties, I always use it in my repartings. And... Use a little bit of spag moss, long strands, but uh, I will cut them so it's going to be cut into small pieces. But it can be evenly, more evenly distributed in the mixture when it's cut into small pieces. That's my thought, and it's been working out very well to keep the moisture and hydration for my booba films. So I, I simply use the very same mix for all of them. In that way, it will be easier to uh, maintain them. And for my bulbs, I always use my hanging baskets, the brown ones. I think it's 9 or 11 centimeters wide across. In case I want to hang them in the future. So why not? Use the same concept. Looks nice. Anyway, we're not there yet. I've been soaking this little 
um, this amount of coconut husk fiber. Uh, I broke off a piece of the uh, coconut, high, coconut husk fiber brick and soaked it for a while. And not so much uh, debris anymore. Look, the water is almost clear. Even though I simply just uh, changed water twice and yeah, flushed it a bit. Not so much effort anymore. Party mix of coconut husk fiber. Put a little bit there. Yep. And into the mixture you go. The coconut husk fiber chips will really keep the moisture very well. So all I really need to do is go over my bulbo films with my sprayer once a week. I don't even need to carry them into my kitchen, let them soak in a bucket or such. So it saves a lot of time and yeah, time I can spend a little bit more well looking at my orchid flowers instead. So I think we need a little bit more coconut husk fiber, yeah? So this is more like it. Good great bark to the bottom. And Bulba Films doesn't like to be reparted. There's a bit of a uh, gravel in here. Some extra minerals, I believe. Simply remove some of the moss here, but not all of it. Looks like it's been reported quite recently. The moss is fresh, smells very nice. Um, don't really mind, I've seen sitting in the same kind of medium for a bit. And a coconut husk fiber. It's strange, but it doesn't seem to be breaking down all that fast as I was scared that it would. So um, it's kind of light. So. Just a little, little soft reporting on this guy. If you ever reported a uh, Bulbophyllum Mendusae, I think you know what it means. The saying that Bulbophyllum does like to be reported. Yeah. So, after that mistake, I got a little bit more careful. A certain species which are more finicky to report than others, and I do not really know which. So, yeah, let's see what happens to these guys. It's a good sized orchid for being two years to flower size. Very good new growth with a little, you know, sign of a, maybe a flower spike that will emerge, or simply just a little sign of its next coming new growth. Yes. So. This is a new growth. Somebody broke it off, not me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space for that one as well to the backside there, in case it decides to grow on. But the most crucial part is this one. It needs to have some proper space. Yep. So I'm gonna focus on that growth. If you ever watched my previous video, uh, Bloom and Spike videos. You saw that my two years to flowering size bulb of film Monster Cyanum did flower most recently. So, they can bloom. It's difficult to determine the age or such, I believe. Uh, let's just yeah, use the right tag. Palavanensi. Very, very lovely. 
Bulbophyllum lobii like flowers. A species not yet described. Very, very nice flowers. Yep. And the same goes for that one. So, it's a very same setup from, yeah, for starters. About a yeah, worse root system. Yeah. And this orchid eye will be able to uh, get a little bit more moss off its roots, but, uh, well, it's okay. It's okay. A little bit of, uh, some more agate to it. So we don't need that. Extra parasite. News growth there. And same procedure. A little bit more into the middle. In many cases, they will surprise you with another new growth to the backside. <laughs> Seems like it always happens. <laughs> with a bulbul. -bul. So, yes. Okay. Spy color. It's done as well. Yes. Well, some days, life isn't really shining on me either. <laughs> After I recorded this reponing video, I, um, I happened to... Um, <laughs> delete a few clips, especially the clip when I was re reporting the uh, Dendrobium rhodostictum. So, you're not able to see the reporting since I permanently erased the little video clip. <sighs> Anyways, but I'm going to tell you what I did with her. So here she is, in a very, very old clay pot, which has been used many, many times before, well saturated. And hydrated clay. I am um, yeah she had very very good root system in growing stage several new root tips coming so it's not the worst time to yeah to report her even though one would have thought so I mean it's late uh, autumn and everything but um, anyway I decided to use the rest of the um, coconut husk fiber perlite charcoal uh, and sphagnum moss mix for her since it needs to be kept moist at all times, is it? This is the very best and most water retentive medium I can ever come up with, I mean, come to think of. So, um, I bet she's going to do fine in there. And I do hope that this little spike will develop. She blooms in spring and even in the late summer. So, we shall see what happens to her. Uh, so, now you know what I reported her into as well sorry <laughs> uh, stupid stuff happens <laughs> from time to time yeah i'm always very very surprised each time i'm about to report my epidendrum stanfordianum how vigorous its roots actually are so not much dead in here very nice as a matter of fact so just a little bit of rinsing and I'm going to use my regular orchid, Kitlea orchid mix, charcoal, moss, perlite, and ready mix bark in a little clay pot. For now, I think this one is a great size for it. For now, that is. Yes. And I'm going to add on a little bit extra spag moss to this mixture in particular. Since this is uh, it's a very small one and the pod is small and it's very dry inside for the moment. So that's what's going to happen. I bet you've all seen my old mixture. The very same mix that the Botanical Gardens in Gothenburg City are using for the orchids in the greenhouses. It's a lovely concept, really. And uh, my Cattleyas grows very well in it, uneven. Uh, other Cattleya type ones, of course. Epidendrums, warm growers. Yes. Yeah, let us not mm, confuse the tags. As you see, I warm splash Leah. And let us look at the roots. Yeah, kind of similar, I'd say. An old leaf. <laughs> um, no. Simplest bag, of course, like usual. Yeah, this is kind of new, this one, so I cannot remove it yet. 
I'll need to wait for a bit until it dries out. Some more. Yeah, and it's got roots. I can tell that it's got roots. It's not dehydrated by any means. It's a very, very hydrated, fine plant, I think. And of course, there's some new roots here. Won't hurt. I'm growing stage, so these guys will be fine. So, now over to the next project. And here comes the real challenge. So, soaking for a while. The um, Epidendrum Stanfordianum pink lip. The variety of the species, shall we say, uh, which turned out to be a um, hybrid, which I do not agree on, but, well. Um, this one has also been treated with neem oil. Very same treatment for all of the new orchids. While I'm at it, this is an ongoing project for a long, long time in my uh, air, uh, blah, in my growing area so it's going to be beneficial since the neem oil is very very good for the plant itself the uh, foliage will nourish the foliage on the plant itself so um, it's not only keeping the insects and their ability on uh, breeding and multiplying Away. It also gives the leaves good shine and hydration. So it's a win win concept, this neem oil solution. I just need to be more consistent. I just used it a little bit and just, yeah, sprayed a bit with it. I simply thought one or two times would be enough, but that's not the way it works. So you need to get rid of the eggs as well and the larva, so um, they won't continuously multiply and you'll never get rid of the insects, so um, but anyway not talk about that, but it already looks better I'd say, so let's see what's gonna happen to this orchid I despise these kinds of net baskets it's kind of difficult to get, I mean, get the whole orchid out in one piece it will destroy quite a lot of its root system, so I um, doesn't like it. It's an epidendrum for Pete's sake, as you see. You'll need to keep it bare root, it's not a vanda. I, don't, I mean, normal people aren't having a huge 80% humidity greenhouse in their living room, I mean. Just regular windowsill growers, we, we cannot keep an orchid like this. It would be very, very difficult to keep up with the watering and humidity. But anyway, so <laughs> it's going to be a long project. <laughs> Oh, I'll lose my temper. <laughs> oh, patience. I'll lose my patience, but it didn't matter. I did it. I got a hanging basket like this for I don't know what. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever use that one. Maybe I can sell it or <laughs> give it away. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, the wire star. Still. Little wire. <laughs> I don't want that one. Uh, just do it like this. Yeah, now I can just get a good grip of it. Oh, Lord. So, now, let us see. Ah, I managed to keep the root tip. Good progress. This thingy. Need, really. I don't need the number. It doesn't tell me anything. 22. So, now let's just wash this gal off. It's a little, little moss. It look fresh. <laughs> uh, I really did get around in one piece. This, I'm proud. It's 
progress. So, yeah. And this flap is going to be white, just like my other one. So, yeah, let's see. Yay, I'm going to use a holy clay pot. The only one I got. Only one I ever find, I believe. To give her the air she needs. But still, a clay pot. Sometimes there must be a reason why they're using a certain kind of pot. So, I thought I made up halfway. Made her needs. So, and her new roots will go over the rim of the pot. Anyway, that's the way of growing. So, it doesn't matter. They will come to life yeah, when it's time for it to uh, grow again. So, never really die off. Even though they go over the rim. So, the same mixture as for the bulbos in this case. I got a little bit of uh, coconut husk fiber in my mixture for, for my large stand for the animal as well. So, and as this one keeps the moisture in such a good way, I, you know, just got an idea. Why not? Oh, Stanford Adams are thrips mag magnets, spider mite, and especially thrip magnets. So the thrip ate off my huge ones, new, two new growth. I never got the chance to see it happening before it was too late. But now she's in spike from the leafless ones, once I had to cut off. So they're kind of resilient anyway, they like to bounce back. I hope this one inherited at least some of the good traits. Mm, we shall see. Ah, another new growth there. Oh, or is it? Might as well just be a flower spike. It looks like this. Like comes out from the uh, bottom here at the base of Slater's cane. So why not? It's a season. So if you're lucky, we shall see. I cannot tell before and, uh, one or two more weeks. So. Very nice pendant spikes. Yeah. So that this one was not scented. Uh, I believe it when I see it. Yes. So. And into a little plastic saucer you go. And we're going to get a beautiful spot in my white Ikea stand sucker. Really need to stake her up, but uh, feels great. Just a little bit for stability. I always stake the uh, largest cane. It's just by routine. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's, need it's not needed in every case. So, yeah. Yes, nice. Pink lip. Let's look at our progress in a while. Everything is progressing by now, so. After this sad, non-blooming summer, and everything was just stalling, full of insects and no flower spikes anywhere to meet the eye. Yeah, I was so sad. I thought I never would be able to show you guys a good bloom spike video again. And all, all of a sudden, it all just exploded. So, it's a very, very funny time to uh, be uh, an orchid mover. For the moment. Yes. That's a beautiful little plant, isn't she? This gorgeous Southern Coffee Robusta. Yes. The second attempt, as I said, in the unboxing video. She's not going to be parted up in any way. No, no. But what she is going to be, she's going to be released from the hang. This basket. And she's been soaking now, her very first soak for since I got her five days ago. <laughs> Look here, she's been spiking from both sides here. One old cut-off spike and another one there. This is 
This is this, whoa, Lordy. What do I see? Two sparks. Oh. But what about the sparks? That's what I'd like to know. I think this spike is drying out. Must be. This one uh, is better hope for that one, yeah. But uh, no. I don't see any hope for these guys. But anyway, what's that happened? Since I got her. It's very, very. Uh, I never had this orchid before, so. But it certainly looks like it's been drying out, but. But as I didn't even notice them when I unboxed it, this orchid, so. Uh, I'm not sure. But anyway, she's a bloom wheel one. Spy from both sides at a time, so. Um, uh, some of the neem oil still there. Stuck. <laughs> but anyway, some good treatment. We shall see some some other spikes. In case these spikes won't make it. Look at this lovely vase here. Here's where she's going to be. I don't like it when they are uh, at the nurseries. Or the uh, vendor, maybe. Where it come from, I'm not sure. They always cut the roots. The root tips. So, um, get very, very short. So, I don't really like it. But anyway, I hope I can squeeze her down into this little pot. I mean, into this little boss. In a way. And I will never have to bring her up again. <laughs> no, of course I will, but yeah, you know what I mean. So, just let her. Be uh, kind of sort of pressed to the sides and just um, yeah, stay there. As I say, easy come, easy go. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't bet on <laughs> this orchid to spike actually, yeah, to develop a spikes. So, it's been too dry here, obviously. So, I don't find it wise to uh, move her from this area in case she uh, started to create these flower spikes the last couple of days. I w yeah, it wouldn't be wise to move her to my very, very dry room where I still have got thrips a bit. I've been cleaning all of my orchids in this area couple of times already so um, it's a lower risk and I also treat, treated this gal, uh, gal as I said add a couple of pieces of charcoal or such just to keep her more steady maybe lava rock yeah I found a piece of lava rock just to keep her a little bit more steady yeah. in here just for now until she settles a little bit of charcoal perhaps yes And we'll see. Yeah, she's more steady. This is better. That's for the time being. Yeah. It's a great plant, actually. Yes. I just love this little tag. Looks so neat. So I saved it. And I have this little tag, of course, which I'm gonna add on to it. Somewhere. To a little basket, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe add on this this little green steak. Somewhere where it's useful. Yeah, it looks great. So, Sarbanicafia Robusta 
Madagascan species. Second attempt in spike. Uh, I wouldn't bet on it. Shall see. At least now I know from where she's gonna put out the spikes. So. And the last orchid. The Gadon Sunray. Dendrobium Gadon Sunray. This huge orchid. Sorry for the light, but I decided to keep it in the net basket in its coconut husk fiber until I see some new roots in spring. I'm going to add on this little plastic frosted one. Put them here and add a couple of good to her just to make her uh, straight and lovely. She is going to grow upright in my living room window or somewhere, I'm not sure yet. If cultivated inside, maybe 90 centimeter, but I've heard a red in the common section that she can be as tall as one and a half meters in the wild. So, if grown outside, so uh, <clears throat> it's a very, very large plant, but I think it's funny. And she's kind of slim, and she's just a little bit taller than expected, yes. So tall I can accommodate, rather than white. So <laughs> would have been worse if she turned out to be one and a half meters wide. So instead, so yeah. So no water, just simply a little spray now and then until springtime comes. And we shall see some good bright light for her. Thank you guys for watching this little report or not report video on the Swarta orchids I've recently got. Hope you like this video and we shall talk soon. Please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like to. Take care. Bye bye.